So my thesis examines a 2014 exhibition at the UC Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive, or BAMFA, called The Possible. I've been thinking about The Possible since last spring when I took a class here at CCA called Making the Museum. As part of this course, my classmates and I spent a few hours a week at BAMFA participating in the exhibition and meeting to discuss related readings. We gained access to the possible through one of our instructors, whose collective, called The Something, had been invited to participate in the show. During the possible, BAMFA transformed a series of their galleries into active artist studios, in addition to The Something's audiovisual and performative installation pictured here, the studios also included a textile studio, a publication studio or print shop, a ceramic studio, and a multi-sensory library with both print and sound archives. The exhibition was even extended to the garden surrounding the museum with the inclusion of a physical activity studio and outdoor showers. Lastly, a gallery was dedicated to a custom pedestal designed to showcase works being produced in the galleries. Guest curator and Oakland-based artist David Wilson invited over 100 artists to participate in the possible. These artists were encouraged to lead workshops, to work in new and familiar mediums, and to collaboratively produce and learn. A series of Sunday workshops, as well as lectures, events, and field trips were also scheduled over the course of the four-month exhibition and were open to the general public. This structure of the possible is reflective of Wilson's ribbons practice in which he develops gatherings from his repeated visits to rural or natural sites in Northern California. After in-depth exploration of the landscape through watercolor and drawn studies, Wilson organizes an event at the location, inviting guests with hand-drawn maps and printed materials. According to his website, Ribbons Gatherings draw together a wide net of artists, performers, filmmakers, chefs, and artisans into situation-based collaborative relationships. This interdisciplinary grouping of makers and crafters, combined with the off-the-grid settings for the events, provides Ribbons Gatherings with a utopian and collective feel, nostalgically recalling California's commune movement of the 1960s. But what happens to an art practice like Wilson's when it moves into an institution like BAMFA, which is supported by the University of California system and is one of the nation's largest university art museums? As Wilson's longest running project to date, the possible is emblematic of a trend in museum programming that reimagines the art museum as participatory, experiential, and democratic. New exhibition models break from our traditional expectations about museums. When we think about a museum, we might imagine a sign that says, please look, but don't touch. The turn away from these models towards participatory programming has mostly been interpreted as an extension of the museum's educational responsibility and as an opening of the institution to a wider public. Sometimes these changes even seem to be in response to critiques leveled against the museum in the past. Both artists and cultural historians have critiqued the traditional museum model for being complicit in the production of capitalist subjectivity. Art historian and curator Dorothea von Hanselman argues that the traditional exhibition model embodies a set of values tied to Western market societies, including the production and circulation of objects, a linear notion of time that emphasizes progress, and the prioritization of the individual. In museums like the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, which still very much utilizes traditional exhibition models, it is easy to locate these values. Objects produced by an established set of masters are used to illustrate art historical narratives of progress. Because it focused on process, experience, and collaboration, it is easy to assume that the possible broke from the set of values associated with older exhibition models. But in order to understand how these values may have actually manifested in the possible, it is important to understand how changes in consumer culture have enabled shifts in artistic production more broadly. We now live in what von Hantelman calls the experience society, in which experience has replaced objects as the most valuable commodity. 
Today, successful businesses not only create desired products, they also create experiences or lifestyles around their products or simply sell us experience itself. Over the past 50 years, contemporary art practices have also come to reflect this change in how we conceptualize products. Artists are no longer expected to simply produce objects. They also perform, lead public programs, or facilitate participatory projects. These changes have often been conceptualized as anti-capitalist or anti-market, but the work of art is inextricably tied to the commodity form. As we have seen in broader consumer society, experience is now marketable and sellable. Changing notions of artistic production should also be interpreted more dialectically along similar terms. The possible inclusion of a gallery dedicated to finished works in a show about process demonstrates the complicated status the object continues to play in the art world. Every Wednesday, Wilson and a team of preparators would select objects from the studios to display on the pedestal. Although the work was not labeled chronologically, for participants or repeated visitors, the pedestal became the place to visualize the progress of the exhibition. This photograph shows a collection of masks and banners that were created for the possible's opening ceremony and later displayed on the pedestal. The growing collection of artifacts displayed in Gallery 3 reiterated the extent to which production and process, as well as experience-based activities like the opening ceremony, became the actual objects of the exhibition. In this sense, the possible embodied capitalism's attention to the object in two ways literally through the production and circulation of objects, and more abstractly by turning production and process into an object for consumption itself. If you were to walk up to the pedestal, you probably wouldn't know the artists who made each piece unless you had seen them make it. In a few cases, you may recognize an artist's particular style, but otherwise, no information about the artists or the work was provided as would be typical in a museum's wall text or educational materials. This system of display seems to counter the Metropolitan Museum of Art model and could be seen as a totally democratic system with no hierarchy being established between the objects by reputable artists and the work produced by visiting children. However, the lack of refinement in this set of objects does more than signal the experimental and process-focused studios of the possible. The handicraft aesthetic that dominates the objects on the pedestal also visualizes how museums parallel advertising companies when they ask visitors to call forward their inner child. The experienced society demands that consuming individuals behave like children, that we give in to our sense of wonder and play and allow awe and excitement to propel our desires. Furthermore, the collection of works displayed on the pedestal also brings up a set of questions around the idea of authorship, and by extension labor, that complicate the possible seemingly engaging and collaborative structure. Because no identifying information was provided, everything created during the possible was ultimately presented to the public as authored by David Wilson. Despite the possible's collaborative rhetoric established through its name and structure, the possible was not a group show. Instead, the possible should be viewed as an extended ribbons gathering, in which case David Wilson is both the curator and the artist on display. In this sense, despite allegedly setting up a collective environment, the possible was actually all about one individual. At one point, this reality became clear to my classmates and me. As a group, we decided with the Somethings Collective to consolidate and cover every piece of AV equipment in the Somethings Gallery. Because we thought the possible wasn't living up to the experimental and collective mission that had been advertised, we wanted to make an intervention into the show. We specifically covered the equipment and materials with a series of white tarps we fastened together to aesthetically recall a 1979 work by artist Maria Nordman at Bamfa, then called the University Art Museum. During one day only, dawn to dusk, Nordman had all the art removed from the galleries and installed a seamless floor of white vinyl across the museum's concrete. Nordman's work asked visitors to experience the museum in a completely different way than they were used to, not unlike the goal set forward for the possible. 
In addition to aesthetically reflecting art historical precedents of Bamfa, we saw the covering of the AV equipment as a critical act, as interrupting the audience's ability to engage with something that was constructed to be participatory and experiential. We also liked the visual relationship our mound had to the pedestal collecting objects in the gallery below. But what we thought was a conceptual, well-researched, and intentional gesture was met with this sign. The something is in the midst of a space transition. Enjoy this slumber installation and expect new action soon. Thank you. I tell you this story to further demonstrate how a single individual's vision was prioritized over the producing collectives. This anecdote also illustrates how once Wilson's ribbon practice was moved, in, moved indoors inside the Berkeley Art Museum, Wilson himself became institutionalized. His role shifted from that of the artist facilitator to that of the curator and public relations representative. The possible attempted to implement an anything goes model of the museum, but it became clear that in the museum, artistic action still needs to maintain legibility under an established set of criteria. Despite its collaborative rhetoric and nod to the 1960s, the possible actually prioritized authorial genius over collective production and embodied a set of capitalist values associated with traditional museum exhibitions. It is not enough to simply present a set of politics. We must struggle to find ways to embody and enact them. Thank you.